Praise the Lord. Wednesday night and we get to celebrate our King and join ourselves together in the spirit of the living God and believe that God is going to do great things in our lives to get his word written on the fleshly tablet of our hearts and be renewed in him. Praise the name of the Lord. Pray your week is going great and that God is ministering to you and that uh, you are at peace with your life with Christ and standing firm on his word. Praise the name of the Lord. I love to say that. I guess that's my favorite phrase of all is praise the name of the Lord. But uh, God is good. And when he's good, you want to give him praise. You want to lift his name up. Well, this month is uh, Pastor Appreciation Month, Leadership Month. And I just uh, want to speak to all of you about uh, having people in your life, counselors, leaders, pastors, employers, friends who are speaking into your life because it's important that we stay balanced. It's easy to get uh, off on our own little tangent in our world and uh, believe that we are doing what is right. But when we have good counselors in our life, people who can see what's going on in our lives and speak to us God's truth. It brings freedom and brings victory and brings peace to each and every one of us. Before we get into this, though, I just want to thank all the pastors and leaders in the body of Christ, especially in our hometown of Bakersfield. Uh, I appreciate the work that every single one of them is doing. And uh, everyone is doing their best to bring Christ into the hearts of people. And so I just want to thank all of you that are serving and ministering. I want to thank all the leadership of our church, the Rock Church, and uh, just tell you thank you. I appreciate you so much for what you do. All of you who serve in any position in the church, uh, I'm amazed as I see your hearts, as I see your uh, desire to please God, to minister one to another, to minister to the hurting, to minister to new visitors that are coming in. It's just, uh, it's exciting to see the body of Christ at work, uh, extending the hand of God to people, to one another. And so again, I just want to thank all of you. Again, we want to uh, lift up Pastor Roger Spradling and uh, They've been getting a couple of good reports. They're able to uh, do some treatment now because of uh, the uh, testing they've done. And so we're just believing as we prayed Sunday, we're believing for God to do a miracle, to guide the dark doctors, to minister health and life to him. Also wanna just uh, tell you, keep praying for Ernie. Uh, Ernie Ponce, a member of our church, uh, and Ernie, I just, if you're watching, I want to tell you God is with you. God is for you. And the procedure they're going to do tomorrow is going to be successful. And you're going to be out of that hospital soon. Because by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. So receive that. And if you're out there today and you're hurting in your body, receive the healing of the living God. It's a free gift of the Lord. Stand in faith and believe in the stripes of Jesus. Believe in the word of the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. Receive it. Just receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. And uh, so again, tonight's uh, lesson is leaders in our lives. And again, it can be a pastor. It can be an employer. It can be a close friend. It can be a parent, a family member. Uh, but it's important that you have uh, people who can can speak into your heart. Proverbs eleven fourteen says this, where there is no counsel, the people fall. So are you falling? Are you down? Are you out? Then you need to seek counsel. Wisdom from not only above in your own prayer life, in your own study life, but from others, because many people probably have gone through the same thing you're going through and they found the answer in Christ. But you need to find people who are going to be steadfast in God's word that will speak into your life. It goes on to say in Proverbs eleven fourteen, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Now, multitude can mean you have more than one that you go to for counsel, 
or it can be those that have been in your life throughout your life and those multiple counsel counselors throughout your life spoke basically the same thing giving you the same kind of wisdom and direction for your life you know for me brother leonard ravenhill was a, a tremendous uh, influence in my life he spoke into my life you know i took my whole family back to his house and we spent uh, time with them, spent the night with them, and, and uh, he just uh, poured into my spirit, and he gave me many, many books to read, and he would write me letters all the time and, and call me and communicate with me. Other pastors I've had in my life that have been so influential to speak to me, friends that are godly friends, uh, praise the Lord, that have spoken into my, I'm so thankful for each and every one of them, because it makes a difference in your life. Because without counsel, you're going to fall. And uh, there's been times in my life where, boy, sin just, you know, made me fall because I thought I was right, or I thought it was okay, or I was going to do it anyway, you know. Uh, but God, hallelujah, everybody say, but God, but God intervened and brings people into your life to encourage you, to speak to you, to challenge you, to bring conviction from the Holy Spirit into your life. It's important, absolutely important, that you have someone or some people that you are accountable to. And uh, if you're not accountable to anyone, uh, folks, you're not going to get the counsel you need. And I want to say this to all of you. You can watch ministers and teachers on television, but you're not accountable to them when you're sitting at home. You can only be accountable to someone that you submit to and have a open relationship with. You're able to talk with them, communicate with them, text them, call them, come to their house. They come to your house. You come to church. Whatever it is, you need to be accountable to counselors, people who are speaking into your life and uh, encouraging you and also correcting you when you need correction in your life. So folks, many people just want to be a, a one man island and they just want to, well, I'll read the word and, and I'll let God do it. Well, God tells us in the council of multitudes, there is safety. So we need to follow God's word. Hebrews 13, seven says, remember those who rule over you who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow, considering the outcome of their conduct. In other words, again, you're close enough to someone to see that their lifestyle and their conduct, they're not perfect. I'm sure, you know, no one is perfect, but the outcome, the overall outcome, how they live their life, what God is doing in their life is worthy of following. So consider the outcome. You can see people that are doing things wrong and the outcome brings disaster into their life. Uh, it brings loss into their life. Or you can follow someone who is doing their best to follow after God and you see God's uh, hand upon them, God's grace upon them, God's supply in their life. And that's important. And you need to be following people who have a lifestyle, a conduct that is bringing in the presence of the Lord into their lives and his abundance in their lives. And when I say abundance, it can be they have no money right now, but they are abundantly at peace with God, believing that God's going to supply their need. The outcome will be that God will supply their need. So we have to look, you know, everything in the natural world with companies and, and uh, promotions on jobs, they're all doing uh, uh, outcomes. You know, when we had Restoration Village and we had the federal grants and the county contracts, they wanted to know what the outcome was of our labor, of our system that we used, of how we counseled and ministered uh, to the individuals. Were we effective? If we were, then the contracts would get renewed. If we weren't, then they would not get renewed. Well, the same thing is true in your personal life. You need to be looking at your life and what is the outcome of the steps that you've been taking? What is the outcome 
of the things that you've desired in your life and gave yourself to get those things? What was the final outcome? You know, we want to have the outcome that God has for us. And the greatest outcome that we can have is that we hear the Lord say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over little. Come, I will make you ruler over much. Come enter the joy of your Lord. We want to hear that outcome in our life. Well, to get that, we need to make sure that we're doing things in this life that is producing a positive spiritual outcome uh, in our lives, a positive outcome in our families, in our finances, in, in our spiritual walk with the Lord. Everything needs to be measured. So many people just scoot along in life day after day after day, and they're never measuring. They're never looking at their life to see why they're in the spot they're in. You know, someone who works hard and is diligent and is uh, following uh, after the Lord and doing the job unto God and not to man, you can look at your outcome and see that you have found favor with God and man. You can look at your life and see what God is doing. You can also see the attacks of the enemy, but how God brought you through. And it makes you confident in your Lord. So God says, remember those who rule over you. Now, rule over you is not they tell you what to do, when to do, and how to do it. It means they are imparting uh, the word of life. They are imparting uh, the things of God. They are an employer, maybe. But they say, who have spoken the word of God to you. Again, the counselor doesn't have to be a pastor. It could be a great friend, an employer, an employee maybe even. Somebody, your best friend, can be that counselor as long as they're speaking the word righteously to you and encouraging you, correcting you, and bringing you into the truth of Jesus Christ. So we need to honor the leaders in our lives and, and remember them and lift them up that they continue to hear the voice of the Lord. I have, I have men of God that I allow to speak into my life, to bring correction into my life, to encourage me. Other pastors and uh, evangelists, different people who have different uh, ministries, but they are my friends. They are pastors. They are coverings for me and they give me guidance. And it's important that you have that. When I have a question, I can call one of them uh, or two of them or three of them, and I can get sound counsel. And that's why it says in the voice of multitudes, their safety, because when you hear three people say the same thing to you, you can be pretty assured it's of God, especially when you know they hear the voice of the Lord. Proverbs 22, 29 says, do you see a man who excels in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before unknown men. That spirit of excellence, that spirit of, of doing what is right before God and doing your best always brings promotion in your life. So as you are walking with God and you are having men or women speak into your life that are godly, you know they, they walk with the Lord, they are uh, people who seek his will, they study his word, and they are speaking into your life, you're going to see them excel. And if you see a work co-worker with you who's doing really everything he can to do an excellent job, you know, you know he's going to excel in his job. So God is talking about promotion, and he's talking about promotion within the kingdom of the living God, because you are seeking counsel, and you are doing your job, your work, your ministry, your service with excellence. They're going, you're going to, they are going to be promoted and he says, you'll speak before kings and not unknown men. In other words, God's going to do the promotion and take you places you never thought possible in your life. Bring you before people you never thought possible that you would be speaking into their lives, giving them counsel. So as you become a person who is doing your service unto the Lord, unto the body of Christ, and you do it with excellence, 
then God says, I'm going to promote you because people are going to want to know how you do what you do. So good. They're going to want to know what made you this way, what inspired you, what encouraged you, what wisdom did you receive that you are doing such a job with excellence, just like Daniel and the Hebrew children. Daniel had a spirit of excellence upon him. And so he was promoted and he sought counsel with God and the Hebrew children sought counsel from Daniel and Daniel was promoted and the king then sought counsel from Daniel. So God is telling us that when we are honoring the leadership that we've had in our life, that we have right now in our life, and honor and listen to what they have to say and put that word into action, we're going to become greater, better at our jobs, better servants, better children of God, better pastors, better uh, evangelists, better everything. Whatever God has called you to do, you're going to do it with a greater spirit of excellence. So again, let's just think about this and reflect where there is no counsel, people fall. An entire nation can fall when there's not right counsel, when they're rejecting the counsel of the righteous. Well, if an entire nation, and that's literally what it's talking about here, if an entire nation can fall because it's not getting righteous counsel, how about you and I in our home? That's our little kingdom. How about us in our ministries where we serve? How about us in our jobs where we uh, work to make a living? We will all fall if we do not get right counsel. And when it says again, the multitude of counselors, it means that the counselors are telling you the same thing. So if you have several people you listen to, but they are telling you different things, you're not safe because you're not sure which one to follow. You have to get people who are of like spirit, like mind, who are in Christ, truly following after him. Then you can be safe. Then when we see someone who is speaking the word of God into our lives and we see and consider their lifestyle, then we can say, I will follow their faith. And it says, follow their faith. It didn't say follow everything they do because they may not be doing everything right. Again, no one has been made perfect yet except for Jesus Christ. There's some approaching it. It's not me, but others are approaching, I guess, perfection. But what we need to do is look and consider how is their life flowing? How is the provision of God in their life, in every area of their life, but most importantly, spiritually, with peace, faith? Are they able to pray and see God move in their lives? Are they able to activate the word of God in their lives? Do they walk in the authority that God has given them? Are they seeing the power of God made manifest over the powers of darkness. Get counsel and honor, respect, and lift them up because they are so important to your life. And that's why I just wanted to take tonight and, and thank, you know, Lewis Paul Lehman. He's not here with us anymore, but he was my first pastor. And what a wonderful man of God. Richard Gerbrandt, what a wonderful man of God. Jerry Curtis. He was a wonderful man of God. I think of all the pastors I know now. I think of Ron Halverson and how he's spoken into my life. Of course, again, Leonard Ravenhill and how he's spoken into my life. I've had so many great and awesome men of God speak into my life. I've had awesome women of God speak into my life that I have built relationship, my wife and I, with them. And uh, we receive and hear the voice of the Lord through them. And so we want to honor and lift them up and just thank God for them. Be grateful for the leaders in your life. 
I thank you. I, I, you know, I thank God for my father. Uh, my father worked hard. He taught work ethic. He taught honesty. I may not have always listened to him, and sometimes he was pretty rough, but praise God, my dad was a, a really good man. I thank God for my sons, you know, because they're all good men of God, and they've taught me things, and I hope I've taught them some things. But we all need to respect and honor those who speak into our lives. So I just want you to take a moment tonight and reflect upon people in your life, past, present, and thank God for those who are coming in the future. Thank God and reflect on the things that they've counseled you with. Because many times, folks, we get sound counsel and we do it and we walk in it for a year or two and then we forget. It's always great to go back and reflect on what God has spoken. Remember from where you have fallen. Remember, God says, remember from where you were at and look at where you're at now and give thanks to what is going on. If you're in the same condition you were when, when you were seeking counsel years ago, then you really need to seek some new counsel that will get you to a new position in Christ, in freedom, in victory, in peace in Christ Jesus. So you have to measure your life. Measure those who are leading you. Make sure that they're walking in the things of God. Hallelujah. So praise God, a simple message tonight, but it's a message of thanksgiving. It's a message of giving praise to the leaders who have been in our lives. I could go down a list of, of people so much. It's uh, I'm just amazed at all the great people that God has brought into my life. And uh, I pray that I've been a blessing to some myself. So anyway, have a blessed and awesome evening tonight. Uh, next week, Pastor Gary's going to be bringing the word. I'll be down in uh, San Diego. I'll be at the Scripps uh, Hospital. I'm going to go do my procedure down there. Praise the Lord. Everything was approved and everything's ready to go. And um, so, you know, next Wednesday night, uh, Tune in or be at the church because uh, Pastor Gary's going to do it live at the church at 630. So we're going to be a little bit earlier than normal, just as we were last Wednesday night. So anyway, we love you. We'll see you Sunday. And oh, I do want to thank all those who worked at our outreach this last Saturday. 350 folks came, blessed with hot dogs and hamburgers, food, uh, Boxes given away, clothing agencies. We must have had 14 or 15 different agencies there to help people with life and struggles they're having, giving them wisdom, giving them opportunities. It was just amazing. Uh, we had the uh, Back to the Future car and Doc was there and uh, he was entertaining the kids and the adults and it was just a great and awesome outreach Melanie, thank you so much for your organization and how you work so hard and so diligent to get that uh, put together. I thank God for you and your team. So praise the Lord. God bless you. Men's breakfast, guys, this Saturday, come 8 o'clock in the morning. We're going to have a great time in Christ Jesus. God bless you. Go in the grace, the peace, and the mercy of God. Amen.